Hi, I am going 72 hours without electronics. I am going 72 hours without electronics. I'm gonna call it advanced electronics because obviously that camera's an electronic and this microphone is an electronic. But 72 hours, Sunday at midnight to Wednesday at midnight. The reason, hold on one second. Ironically, I need to go get my phone to prove the point of why. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. The culprit, my hell, the bane of my existence, my iPhone. We're just gonna see how many hours I've spent on my phone in the last week. Screen time. This is today. It's 4.45. It's Sunday. Three hours and 48 minutes. Four hours I've been on my phone. Let's see. Seven days. My average per day is six and a half hours. 18 hours is on social networking. Only six hours is on productivity. And six hours is on reading and reference. My weekly total is 45 hours and 37 minutes. <laughs> Let's talk about what you could do in 45 hours, okay? I could learn another language. I probably could have graduated from college. I could drive to Vancouver, British Columbia from Los Angeles, California and back again. Yeah, 45 hours, 72 hours without electronics to me. Sounds like vacation. Reason being, I'm not gonna date myself, but I, children, grew up without advanced electronics. I grew up without a cell phone. I grew up without a TV. I grew up without MapQuest. I don't even know if MapQuest exists anymore. I grew up without Waze. I grew up without Wi-Fi, computers that traveled with you, <laughs> car sharing. I grew up without all of this stuff. There is something beautiful and refreshing about taking electronics out of our lives. I am slightly curious if this is actually gonna be hard for me. Here are the parameters. No phone, no email, no text, no maps, no ride sharing, no social media. Okay, that's what no is. What I can use, cameras. I can keep my phone with me in case there's an emergency and I need to call 911 because let's face it guys, I could probably walk for 10 miles and not find a freaking payphone. So I will have my phone on me. I cannot use the maps in my car. I cannot use Amazon. Oh my God. Amazon. I'm ordering some stuff because the dogs are gonna starve. Be here by Wednesday. Anyway, okay, that's done. I have no idea what I'm gonna do for three days. This is gonna get really boring. Also, my house has cameras in it. Accountability, I think. And then I also just think that my friends wanna make fun of me when I don't have anything to do. So that's what's gonna happen. I know, Nelly. I don't know what I signed myself up for. Wish me luck. morning one, nine hours without electronics. I walked the dogs and stuff. Couple things I noticed already that are a little strange. So usually the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is check my phone because my alarm is attached to my phone, which then I see all the alerts on my phone of the text messages and emails. And so my day starts with my phone. I don't love it, but it just sort of like happened over time, right? I would pick up my phone, I'd see my text messages that I got, I would see my emails that I got, and then I would check the news, and then I would check social media, and then before you know it, you've been laying in bed for 30 minutes checking your phone. <laughs> so I missed a phone call at my house when I was walking the dogs, had a message on my answer machine. <laughs> Images, and I'm not sure how long you're going to be doing this kind of non electronic thing. Anyway, give me a call when you can. This is my decorator. End of messages. Nobody loves me. It was all work stuff. <laughs> my morning is a lot more relaxed. I know that what I have to do today is go take my car in to get it serviced. That's what I have to do. Then I have to go work out, and then I have some errands. Other than that, like, People can't get a hold of me. I'm kind of digging this. I mean, you know, nine hours in and all. I'm not really concerned about the daytime, y'all. I'm concerned about the nighttime because that's when I watch Netflix and chill. And I can't do that anymore.
can't listen to satellite radio in my car. Normally, I would put this into Waze because I don't like to waste time in LA traffic. It's just so weird just driving. Like, it's so weird. It's kind of nice. I'm bored. I can't believe that I've actually made it to the dealership without a map or Waze. I obviously knew the fastest way to get here. I made it. Bye. I am in the rental. Everybody's laughing at me because I don't have a phone. Cannot make a phone call until I get home, which sucks. It's not even 11 o'clock yet. I'm only 11 hours into this and I'm already bored. I have got to call the Range Rover dealer and give the guy my phone number because I didn't know it. Now what do I do? You have reached the voicemail box of... Hi, it's me. I'm bored. It's only 11.30. I'm gonna go run some more errands and take the dogs for a walk. And that's about it. This shit's gonna get real fun tonight. Okay, I'm gonna walk the dogs. So I go to the gym four or five times a week. I have never had it take this long. You wanna know why I'm stuck in traffic? Because I can't use Waze. And Waze always takes me around the hell that is LA traffic. But instead, I drove right by a high school that was getting out. Awesome. But I'm on my way to the gym and my cardio is now cut from an hour. We're at 45 minutes right now. It's probably gonna take me another 15 minutes to get there, so I'm gonna do about 30 minutes of cardio. I'm still in traffic. This light has turned green four times. I sat at that fucking light for six minutes. Day one recap, people. I'm having wine. Here's what I realized. Being disconnected from people when you don't have the option to actually be connected is really lonely. We take for granted that this communication and this instant communication that we have with each other is actually really amazing. So that's what I realized today, is that that and that I use ways to get everywhere, the maps and getting places quickly and all of that stuff. And then I don't know people's phone numbers. <laughs> I don't know my boyfriend's phone number. I know people that I could call that have it, but I wanna see how easy it is to actually find it without friends' help. Here we go. For English, press one or stay on the line. For a residence listing, please press two. Let me transfer you to an operator who can assist you further. I'm gonna get a real person. 411 is not very helpful. Yeah, no, they're not there. Oh wait, hello? Please hold for an operator. Hi, um, do you guys actually do Canada as well? We're going to have a listing for Robin Webb today on any street, Vancouver, British Columbia, sorry. Okay, that's okay. Can I try one more? M-E-R-E. Uh -huh. -E. Oh, sorry, man. We're going to have a listing for the SM Gatsby on any street in Vermeer. What is it with everybody wanting privacy? List your goddamn numbers. <laughs> that didn't work. Who has his phone number? My dad. Hey dad, it's me. Um, so I was hoping, oh, wait, you're calling me right now. How do I? Hi. Hi. Who's this? It's Katie. <laughs> it's your daughter. This Hi. is my house phone number. It says Santa Monica and I thought, who's that? Then I heard you and I thought it must be Kate. Well, I'm calling because I don't have Robin's phone number, but you do. <laughs> You don't have Robin's phone number. Dad does, because he's on the text message chain, isn't he? Wasn't he? That's on the phone, it's okay. No, there's no other phone number, Katie. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. Eventually he'll call me. I just think this is hysterical that I can't find my boyfriend's phone number. The good news is, is that I have you and mom memorized and Leland memorized, and that's it. Those are the only phone numbers I have memorized. Oh, <gasps> There it is! Oh my god, I can't believe it. I can't believe that, that it was that hard. That's hysterical. I did it. Bye. Bye. Couple things we learned from that. Directory assistance is 
f***ing useless because nobody's listed. I officially have my boyfriend's phone number, which is a good thing. So I can actually call him in the event that I die or something. <laughs> Here's my point is that we have all these relationships that we let slide because it's so easy to connect with people via text or social media or email. And on that note, I'm gonna call my boyfriend. <laughs>Good morning, day two with no electronics. So I just woke up and it's a little strange not checking my phone every morning when I wake up. So last night I put together the border of a 1000 piece puzzle. Doing a puzzle by yourself is not as much fun. There's so many effing pieces. Minus one piece, I went through the box three times searching for that one piece. So that's a bit frustrating, but anyway, I digress. I will work on that puzzle again tonight, I would imagine. But a couple things today I wanna try. So yesterday I realized that I wanted that real human connection, right? My friend Justin lives a mile away from me. I don't know Justin's phone number. He does not know my house phone number. So he may be trying to get hold of me. I'm sure he is. And I'm just not responding because our dogs play together. So Happy is in desperate need of a play date, as am I. So we are going to go try and find Justin today. Don't know how I'm gonna do that, but we'll figure it out. I got my hat on so people don't think I'm trying to break into his apartment, even though that's actually kind of what I'm trying to do. Here goes nothing. He may not even be here. He's not effing here. Okay, I'm gonna leave my phone number. I don't know what the unit number is. This is not going the way that it was supposed to go. You guys, it's more impossible than I thought to break into an apartment building. Excuse me? Hi, I'm trying to leave my phone number for my friend that lives in the building. Can I leave my number? Oh, he's coming. So my friend Justin lives here. I'm just trying to leave him my house number because my cell phone broke. Okay. okay, thank you so much. He's not here, but I'm gonna leave it on his front door. Does he have curtains? That actually looks like his unit. This is it, I can see his sunglass that he invented. Oh my God, this is hysterical, you guys. Pen, phone number. What are we gonna use to stick it to his door? <laughs> my visitor thing. That should work. Katie Sackhoff, visitor. I have put the number on the door. I've talked to his nest. We can only hope that works. Mission accomplished, sort of. All we can do now is wait. Yo. Justin! I am um, gonna take Luke to the dog park. Okay, do you wanna meet at the dog park? Sure. So I'm sitting at the dog park with Daniela and Justin, having real connections, <laughs> playing with our kiddos. Day two recap. I've never actually realized how little we can communicate with the outside world and still live. I was talking with Trisha for tonight about the direct correlation between social media and technology and depression. And we all know this, we've heard about this. You know, we've heard the PSAs and the warnings for our children to stay off of social media or be limited to it and, and make sure that you keep an eye on what your kids are looking at and things like that, right? Who's looking out for you? You know, who's looking out for you? I don't know if anyone has ever said to me, hey, Katie, do you think that social media is hurting you spiritually or hurting my heart or hurting my self-esteem? Because I, I probably didn't think that it did. How do I feel every time I get off social media? I feel less than, less than other people, less than I did five minutes ago, just less than. And if you are a strong enough human being, God bless you and you can combat that, you are a champion because it's hard. We compare ourselves to everyone on a daily basis. I think that removing that aspect of technology from my life from the last two days has been really eye-opening. I, Katie Sackoff, the person that everybody thinks is really strong and the person that everybody thinks has their shit together, is affected by social media. You know, I see someone whose life looks more interesting than mine. I see someone who's on a better vacation than mine. I see someone who's prettier than me, taller than me, thinner than me, bigger than me. Whatever it is, 
We see those people. I see those people. And I feel less than. And then it starts to affect everything else about my day. And the thing that has been so cool is that I have just been doing what I needed to do and wanted to do and wherever my heart took me in the moment for the last two days. That was cool. When there's no one else around and you have no distraction, that's when you figure out who you are and what you want and what's important and what hurts. And in those moments, that's real. And we don't give that to ourselves enough anymore because we are so addicted to technology. So day two, done. So it's day three. I've already gotten up. I've done my morning. This is sort of becoming normal and easy now, you know, that I don't check my phone in the morning. I sort of like have this pattern down where like I do everything, I don't get distracted. I realized that this has been really eye-opening for me. And so it occurred to me that I actually like this no cell phone thing. But what if there's an emergency? What if someone needs to get a hold of you right now? So I was actually thinking, what if I had a pager? Like doctor, lawyer, sack off. I'm obsessed now. I did during the afternoon today. I couldn't find this piece forever. And it was on the ground. I think that Happy had taken it. And I knew, I was looking for the butt of the fox. Happy. Turn the camera on because Justin and I are talking about the importance of actual communication. And there's been a couple things I've been telling him sort of what I've learned and he's been participating in this with me. And like I said that, you know, the problem is like with our significant others, we will text them 15 times a day or five times a day or whatever it is. So we feel like we've participated in their day. And then at the end of the day, when you actually go to communicate with that other human being, you've got nothing to talk about because you are already caught up on everything and then there's no intimacy you got nothing 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 so we have all these memories in our brain that are not our own they are other people's memories it's true they're implanted in our brains elon musk is a genius he said that we were already living in the simulation we are this is exactly what he was talking about this moment right here that i have memories that are not my own we're screwed we're screwed. Good morning. So this is the end. I made it. Today is day four. I'm going to turn my phone on right now. I'm a little scared for a couple reasons. One, I'm a little scared because there's gonna be just an overabundance of emails. And then I'm also a little scared to see if people actually didn't miss me. My phone has been on airplane mode. I have 69 emails right now. It's not that bad. I've got four voice messages, 81 emails. Scratch that. I have 147 emails, 31 text messages, and four voice messages. We're gonna go through the emails and delete all non-essential, like, crap. I'm getting rid of spam. That takes me down to 111 emails. So now let's go to the text messages. 31 text messages, but they're mostly from the exact same people. My family, my neighbor, nothing. There are no text messages that are important. There are no text messages that are important. It was just emails. Not a whole hell of a lot, you guys. Nobody really texts. Nobody really, you know, they have my number. If they wanted to hang out, they'd call, which doesn't hurt my feelings because I had a great time. I'm gonna continue this. The world didn't end. My mental health is better. And if people really needed me, they found me. So, I would say this is a success. 
Although I'm a little tired and hungover today because I couldn't get an Uber to come home earlier than I would have liked last night. And I ended up getting home at 10 o'clock, which is a little late for me because I hadn't eaten dinner yet. So I ate something really quick, worked on my puzzle a little bit and then went to bed. So I'm a little tired. But other than that, 72 hours without electronics. It wasn't earth shattering to the outside world. Nobody really gives a crap. But the crazy thing is that I'm better here better here and i think it's a good thing i think you should all try it maybe tell people before you do it though thanks for joining me bye